The LA Kings come up with a much-needed win. I'll tell you what I was impressed by and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. I'm also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the past 18 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Well, the LA Kings played game number five of their season-long seven-game road trip in Montreal against the Canadiens. LA checked in with a record of 1-1-2, and two, coming off a 6-2 loss the night before in Toronto. Montreal was checking in with a record of 2-2. Two and two. Now, my head told me this was not a big game. It's just game five of an 82-game regular season. But in my heart, I felt like this was a big game. The Kings were not just... Uh, I mean, they still have more games to go on this road trip. But this was the end of the time away from home. After the game in Montreal, they were heading back to Los Angeles and they would be at home when they took a quick bus trip down to Anaheim for a game on Sunday and then a quick flight next week to Las Vegas to officially wrap up that seven game road trip before, of course, the home opener next Thursday. So I was a little worried that the Kings might be like, let's get this trip over with. Uh, It's been an up and down group of games so far we'll get home we'll regroup we'll be fine but let's just get out of here and I was a little worried that they wouldn't show up with their game faces on thinking about heading home for Montreal so I I really felt after that performance in Toronto especially a really bad first period I wanted to see the Kings show me something I want to see this group of Kings show me some fight show me some heart and come out and play with some pride uh, because they needed a big win I really felt like they needed a win over Montreal to kind of wrap up this part of the season on at least a a decent note. So the Kings would see changes as far as the starting lineup in this one. We're going to revisit this a little bit later on and talk about the moves made. But right right now, just for informational purposes, uh, we will tell you that the top line was changed. It was still Andre Kopitar centering Adrian Kempe, but Quinton Byfield was in fact moved to the wing on the top line where he played almost all of last season. Now, the one good thing about that is that the finger injury that he suffered late in the game against Montreal obviously wasn't enough to keep him out of the lineup. So that was good news. We'll talk about the, our thoughts on moving him back to the wing coming up. The second line was different. Yeah, it was Philip Deneau with Trevor Moore, but Kevin Fiala had now joined them on that second line. The third line was different. It was still, well, it wasn't still, it was Alex Turcotte being moved up to center, the third line uh, with Byfield moving up to the top line and Warren Fogle would be with him and Alex LaFerriere moving off the top line down to the third line and the fourth line would be Trevor Lewis centering Tanner Janot moving down from the second line and Andre Lee as well. The defensive pairings also would be shifted uh, shifted up a little bit. You had Mikey Anderson with Vladislav Gavrikov playing on his offside, playing on the right side. Andreas Englund was moved up to the second pairing. Jordan Spence reinserted back into the lineup. And the third pairing would be Caleb Jones moving from the right to the left where he played the previous game. And Brant Clark being dropped down from the top pairing down to the third pairing. David Riddick would once again be in net for the Kings. He started the game against Toronto, didn't finish it, played about half the game before he was then replaced by Phoenix Copley, Um, but apparently that was done to rest him for this game. Uh, Your scratches were Akil Thomas, Alex Burrows, and, of course, Darcy Kemper uh, still out. So the Kings are carrying three goalies right now. Kemper listed as day-to-day with uh, whatever injury he is dealing with. So after that horrific 
first period in Toronto. I wanted to see a much better opening period from the Kings in Montreal. I thought that had to happen for the Kings to be competitive in this game and to potentially get a win. Well, thankfully that did happen right away. Solid start by the LA Kings. Very encouraging to see. Had a few shots on goal, spent some time in the Canadians end, but most importantly, didn't give up any high quality scoring chances. Unfortunately, that didn't mean that the Kings didn't fall behind in this game as Montreal scored on a nice wraparound goal. Um, but very late in the first period, LA would get on the board. Mikey Anderson, a point shot that uh, was on net. It looked like it might've hit something on the way in, but Anderson gets credited for the goal and we were tied at 1-1. But just as important, the Kings played a solid all-around first period. Second period, Jordan Spence would fire a shot from the point. Alex Laferriere would get his stick on it to give the Kings a 2-1 lead. That would be the score after two periods. In the third period, LA gets another goal from a defenseman, Andreas England, with a point shot that finds the net back of the net. Adrian Kempe then would ice the victory with an empty net goal, and the Kings skate off with a much-needed 4-1 victory. As far as the final stats in this one, uh, the Kings, uh, again, finishing with the 4-1 win. Shots on goal favored LA 32-27. to As far as the power play, uh, LA 0-2, but Montreal 0-5, so the Kings P PK getting the job done against the Habs. Faceoffs favored Montreal 32-22, but I will say the Kings had some timely faceoff wins, especially late in the third period before the Adrian Kempe uh, empty net goal. Uh, the Canadians had pulled their goalie. They had a power play as well, so they had a uh, six on four advantage, and the Kings won some really big faceoffs late in that game. Philip Deneau did a really good job in the faceoff circle uh, for the Kings. So they didn't win the faceoff battle overall, but there were some really timely big faceoff wins for the Kings uh, in this game. Block shots favored Montreal 19 to 12, and hits favored Montreal 34 to 25. But the most important stat, of course, is the scoreboard, and the Kings get the much needed win. They were the better team in this game. Uh, the big takeaway for me from this game, though, I guess kind of the obvious, um, and we know the new look Kings this year with some new players and some younger players and players playing different roles. Uh, you know, we, we know that that's a thing, but this kind of felt like the old Kings, uh, kind of boring maybe, but reliable. Uh, obviously not a perfect performance. Rarely is that ever the case, but we didn't see those easy entries through the neutral zone, into the zone. We didn't see the Kings giving up those high-quality scoring chances from dangerous areas. We didn't see the breakdowns defensively. This type of defensive effort is what we're used to seeing from the LA Kings, and it's part of the reason why it was so alarming to see them have a couple bad periods in Buffalo, a bad game in Ottawa, and a bad first period in Toronto defensively. Uh, very encouraging to see the Kings know they got to show up for a game, get off to a good start, and do the things defensively, and that's the recipe for them to be able to get a victory, sustain it for three periods. They did it in this game, get some timely goals, and skate away with a big two points. Now, there's still work to be done for sure, but I have to say I feel a lot better about the LA Kings after this game than I did going into this game. I'll be honest, I was a little bit on the verge of a bit of a panic with what we'd seen from the Kings lately. Um, but uh, the Kings come back after uh, some tough periods uh, in Ottawa, in Toronto, and uh, get a big effort in Montreal, play the game the right way, correcting mistakes, learning. And, uh, you know, I got to give it up to Jim Hiller. The adjustments he made in the lineup certainly paid off for this game. Uh, but again, still work to be done, but feel a lot better about the Kings following that win over Montreal. What was particularly good for the Kings in this one? Uh, well, first of all, I would point out the penalty kill. Did a very good job. They allowed like six power play goals in the last two games. Obviously a much, much better job against Montreal, uh, shutting them down on all four of their power play chances. Then I don't even really recall any grade A quality scoring chances for Montreal with the man advantage. Thought the goaltending was good as well. Big save Dave had some big saves, particularly in the second and third period. And I did want to point out, for all the love and excitement over Quentin Byfield and Brand Clark, and understandably so, how about Alex Turcotte and Alex Laferriere? 
frankly, they've been the better young players on the Kings so far this season. And it's not because Q and Clark have been horrible, but because Turcotte and LaFerriere have been that good. Uh, I love, by the way, how Alex LaFerriere didn't seem to be upset or put off by being taken off the top line, especially because there was no reason to do so based on his performance. He's had a great start to the season so far playing on that top line, but they move him down to the third line, pair him up with Alex Turcotte, and they both look great. Uh, they've looked great separately. They look great together in this game. And I'll say for Alex Turcotte, I don't know if he'll ever live up to the, you know, uh, the hype of being a top five pick in the draft. I think at, we were kind of all just hoping he'd be a bottom six contributor in the NHL. But from what I'm seeing, and I know it's early, we have to preface all, preference all this stuff with it's early, but he's looking more and more like he could be a top six forward in the NHL. I uh, really love what I'm seeing out of both of those guys. Still, of course, a lot of season left to go, but very encouraged by what we've seen from Alex Turcotte and Alex LaFerriere. Um, we I still think Quentin Bifold and, and Brant Clark are going to be great and ultimately will be you know, the better of the, the young players. But those two guys, the Alexes, uh, getting it done for the LA Kings. A couple of bad things about this game. Uh, I think he missed opportunities. Uh, for the Kings, because this game didn't have to be as close as it was. Now, the final score looks like a, a dominant win 4-1, but the Kings had a 2-1 lead for most of the second half of this game. Uh, but And I have to point out Kevin Fiala, he had a breakaway in the first period, he had a penalty shot in the third, and he came up empty on both. Now, I'll give him props for getting himself into a position to have those chances, but People have talked about, you know, do we are Kempe and Fiala elite players? And I've always said they've got elite skills, but they have to do it on a more consistent basis to be considered elite players. Um, and I'll give Kempe credit. He plays a very solid defensive game every night. Fiala, he's got elite skills, but elite players finish those chances. They don't just put up the numbers, but they they come up big in big opportunities. And Kevin Fiala. That, that penalty shot could have put the game away or at least gone a long way in helping put the game away, and he didn't do it. So gotta gotta when you have those uh, opportunities, you got to come away with goals. And unfortunately, Kevin Viala had a tough uh, opportunity, a couple opportunities there that he did not cash in on. All right, how about the Kings Blue Liners in this game? We'll get into that more here on Locked on Only Kings, your team every day. Hey, NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. So when you get a hunch in the middle of a game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. And of course, FanDuel is there for you to bet on Major League Baseball's postseason as the Dodgers look to continue their march towards the World Series. I've uh, also got NFL games coming up this weekend. The Rams favored by seven points at home against the Raiders. The Chargers are two and a half point favorites Monday night in Arizona. Uh, FanDuel. You can use it to browse the latest betting odds of your favorite sports and teams on the Sportsbook app and get in on the action. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. All right, did want to talk about uh, the Kings' defense in this one. And I had said before, it wasn't just about the blue line specifically that was having the issues. I thought the Kings as a team defensively were having a lot of breakdowns, but I would, I did want to point out, I thought the Kings blue line, I thought their six defensemen in this game against Montreal play a very solid game. And how about contributing offensively? That's something we don't see a lot of in particular from guys like Mikey Anderson and Andreas England. And granted, neither of the two goals they scored are highlight real goals, but and we talked about winning faceoffs as well. Both of those goals they scored were on faceoff wins in the Montreal zone. So maybe Montreal won the more number of faceoffs, but the Kings won some key faceoffs, both offensively and defensively. And I know that Jim Hiller had challenged Mikey Anderson to have a more of a shot mentality. Haven't seen a lot of that, frankly, until this game. Um, but good to see him getting his opportunities to put it on goal and, and getting it in. And Andreas England the same way. These two guys, I don't know if they'll combine for 10 goals, on the season, but to get offense from those two guys is obviously a big deal. Vladislav Gavrikov uh, had a two-assist game, and Jordan Spence had an assist as well, uh, also a plus two for Jordan. And 
I will say I strongly disagreed with the decision of Jim Hiller to make Jordan Spence a healthy scratch against Toronto. F- didn't know for sure if maybe there was an illness or an injury. Turns out it was not. He just got benched. And I thought that was very, very unfair to Jordan Spence. And yes, I had pointed out that he has had his struggles trying to play on that top pairing, replacing Drew Doughty. But he was put in a difficult position. And I think realistically, you had to kind of expect that he was going to have some issues. And to bench him for that, I thought was an overreaction. Uh, Now, if you wanted to move him back down in the lineup, okay. But to bench him for that, I thought was, uh, I I just thought that was too too harsh of a reaction. Um, Either way, uh, Spence certainly handled it like a pro, came back in this game against Montreal and had a very strong game. Uh, made some nice plays defensively, was confident with the puck, put some shots on goal. Um, Again, you would never have known that he was uh, bothered or was a healthy scratch uh, in the previous game. So great job by Jordan Spence of of handling that situation. Well, maybe he was motivated by it. Maybe not. Maybe he just turned the page, but I thought he did a great job uh, in the game against Montreal and good to see him bounce back. Young players are going to have their issues, but it's how they respond to those issues. Uh, that really shows what, what type of player and what type of person they are. And kudos to Jordan Spence. That was fantastic. I want to, if you're watching on YouTube, I want to put the lineup graphic back up and look at the changes that were made uh, in this game against Montreal. Quinton Byfield moved back to the wing. Not a fan of this move, to be totally honest with you. Now, it was pointed out in the game broadcast, Quinton Byfield did have a finger or a hand injury Late in the game against Toronto, Daryl Evans said perhaps the move to wing was because of a hand injury and because they were concerned about him taking faceoffs. That's possible. I'm not buying it, though. I think Byfield was moved off the center because they didn't like the way he was playing, and I think that's an overreaction, kind of just like with Jordan Spence. Some of these younger guys are going to be put in in situations, and it's going to take some time. And Maybe this speaks to how big of a game this actually was and how Jim Hiller felt so strongly about what need, what needed to be done to get a win to end this road trip. But I hope we see Quentin Byfield back at center in the near future. That having been said, the result of Byfield being taken, maybe I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth here, but the result of Byfield being taken off, off out of center did move other players into positions that I I actually like them better. And I like Kevin Fiala on that second line more than I like him on the third line. Uh, I will say that, you know, Tanner Janot, I think he's probably a fourth line guy. He feels like he's more of a fourth line player, not on that second line. I like that. Um, And we talked about LaFerriere and Turcotte playing together on that third line. A couple of young, dynamic, hungry players being put together with uh, Warren Fogle as well. Um, I, I do kind of, I think Byfield needs to go back to center ultimately, I will say this though, the play of Alex Turcott has, and him being the third line center, it makes it a lot more understandable why you, you might want to see Byfield on the wing. Ultimately though, we know Quentin Byfield needs to be the number one center on this team. I guess it doesn't have to be right now. Uh, if Alex Turcott can keep playing the way he's playing then I can understand why you'd want Byfield on the top line and Turcotte maybe as that third line center. But again, I, I, like I said, I don't overall agree with the kind of quick trigger finger that Jim Hiller has had with moving Byfield off a of center. At the same time, I can't deny that I do kind of like what the forward setup is right now. As far as the defenseman, um, you know, it, it's it's it was very good against Montreal. I assume they'll keep it that way until they need to change it. Um, but, uh, you know, it, it kind of is a mixed bag right now. They're, they're really going to be shuffling around. I think a lot until Drew Doughty comes back. And then once that happens, I think they can maybe get a more settled three pairings, uh, of defensemen. But, uh, right now I, I'm not going to be surprised to see anybody playing with anybody, uh, at this point, but a good job by those guys, a really good job by those guys against Montreal, And David Riddick stepping in, uh, didn't have a great game against Toronto. Certainly wasn't all his fault, but we talk about, you know, making the saves you need to make. He definitely did that. And then some against Montreal, he made some high quality saves. Big save. Dave had some big saves in that game. 
I will say one thing about the lineups. Uh, it's not a big deal, but Akil Thomas has not played so far this season. Everybody else on the Kings roster has played at least one game. A little disappointed that he has not gotten on the ice for one game at some point on that road trip. I, I thought it was he was deserving of getting in the lineup and showing what he could do. Maybe early on replacing Trevor Lewis, although Lewis now playing center, but Thomas can play center as well. So a little bit disappointed. Uh, we have not seen Akil Thomas so far this season, but it's it's a minor complaint. And that said, the results speak for themselves. Jim Hiller, at least for this game, got to give him credit, pulled the right strings, put out a, a good lineup. And like I said, I expect this lineup to stay the same for the Kings until they feel need to change it again. All right, coming up, we do have our three stars of the night. My famous, my famous, my favorite segment because it means the Kings won. And frankly, it was a tough choice to pick just three stars for the Kings. And that's good news because that means a lot of different guys played well. We'll uh, tell you what our three stars for the game over Montreal, the win over Montreal is in just a moment here on Locked on the Kings, your team every day. We are so lucky here in Southern California to have so many live events to go to college football at the Coliseum and the Rose Bowl. You've got sports, of course, uh, also though theater events, comedy shows and concerts. But no matter what you're into, you need to do what I do. And that's use game time for all your ticket needs. Game time has a new feature called game time picks. It makes getting tickets to your favorite live events even easier. Game time picks filters out the fluff. So you only see incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. You can get USC and UCLA football tickets for darn near free when you use the Game Time discount. Uh, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On NHL, and you will get $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account, redeem the code Locked On NHL for $20 off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. And Prize Picks is America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. All you have to do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Just go to Prize Picks app, make your right picks now, and you could be a winner. And you can also win 10 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Price Picks is the best way to get in on the sports action in most states, including California. Download the Price Picks app today and use the code Locked On NHL and get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. That's the code Locked On NHL on Price Picks to get fifty dollars instantly when you play five dollars. You don't even need to win to receive the fifty dollar bonus; it's guaranteed. Price Picks run your game. All right, it is time for our three stars of the game, and this was a difficult decision because a lot of guys played well, and it's always fun when it's a difficult decision. Um, Adrian Kempe had a goal and an assist. Vladislav Gabrikov had two assists. Mikey Anderson could have very easily been one of the top three stars, and you could certainly make an argument that he was one of the top three stars. Played very, very good defensively and had a goal as well. And Alex Turcott could have very easily been on this list as well with an assist. Um, and uh, on the season, um, he's now got a goal and two assists. But I'm going to go for my three stars with my number three star, Jordan Spence. Talked about it earlier. Loved the way he handled the uh, benching for one game. Came in, played very solid defensively, contributed offensively as well, had the assist on the point shot, was a plus two in the game. Thought he played a really, really good game. I'm going to go with David Riddick for our number two star with his 23 save performance. And I mentioned it had, he lived up to the nickname, big save. Dave had some big saves in this game, particularly in the second and the third period. And for my number one star, I'm going to go with Alex LaFerriere with his game winning goal in this one. Uh, now three goals on the season and an assist in five games so far. A lot of different guys could have been one part of the three stars, but I'm going to go with Alex LaFerriere. I've really, really liked the way He's played so far, and again, being moved off the top line down to the third line, you, he could have taken it as a demotion. He could have said, why is this happening? I've been doing great. This isn't fair. Nope, just went out and played another great game and said, wherever you put me, uh, I'm going to do well. And that's an awesome a problem, if you want to call it that, for Jim Hiller to have, trying to figure out where to play guys like Alex Turcott and Alex LaFerrier because of how well they are playing. All right, so a much, much needed win for the LA Kings. Felt like a big win 
great all around team effort, everyone doing their job, exactly what the Kings needed to sort of wrap up this road trip, five games away from home record of two, one and two. They now come back home to LA. They've got two more games on this road trip before the season opener on Thursday at Anaheim and at Las Vegas, but obviously short trips. So the Kings will be back home, uh, a bus ride to Anaheim and a quick plane flight to Las Vegas. And uh, then the road trip will be over. Hopefully we'll see at least one more win by the LA Kings before we get that home opener next Thursday against the San Jose Sharks. Before we close, I wanted to quickly mention the passing of Gan Matsuda. Uh, He was a longtime Kings blogger, wrote for Frozen Royalty. Uh, He unfortunately lost his battle with cancer at the age of 61. I had a great time chatting with Gan and a mutual friend, Brian Kennedy, in the press box at Kings games often. Uh, He could come across as a soft-spoken guy, but he uh, he was very mischievous. He had a dry wit and a dry sense of humor and uh, one of the first internet bloggers out there covering the LA Kings, a member of the professional hockey writers association. Very sad to see earlier today that Gan Matsuda had passed away. He will be missed for you. Everydayers, those of you that listen to watch locked on LA Kings every day coming up on Friday, it will be our usual Kings fan feedback show reaction to the first five games of the season. For the LA Kings or anything else that's on your mind that you want to talk about, get in on the action by sending an email to LockedOnEddy at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E. And you can always leave your comments on the YouTube episodes as well. If you'd love, uh, if you'd like to be interactive with the show on social media, we'd love it. X, Twitter, Instagram, we are at LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia, feeling a lot better about things with that Kings victory. Uh, thanks for listening and watching this episode of Locked on LA Kings, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We will talk to you on Friday. And as always, go Kings go.